Hi, so I'm Julia Chambers and I work with Marino V1. Everyone's laughing, why are you laughing? <laughs> um, I've been given the fantastic task of talking to you about reporting, which I know is what most of you dread. So this time around we've tried to make it as easy and light touch as possible, but obviously there's still going to be quite a lot of reporting to do, and specifically on the thematic um, uh, results and indicators. So basically what you're going to be asked to do is report at a minimum on three of the gap objectives and how you contribute to those throughout some of the indicators. We're also going to ask you to tell us which indicators you will be measuring those objectives against. The activities that you will be carrying out to support those indicators and what your baseline is. So at the end of the presentation, I'll come back to that and show you a template that we've designed which will allow you to send that information back to B1 on an annual basis. We're also going to talk, throughout this presentation, I'll also talk through how we're going to use the EU results framework process to gather a lot of this information for you so that you don't have to be doing this twice because obviously a lot of this will happen through the results framework. Um, so basically, the way to do it, move on to the next, yeah, is based, as Blurino explained, based on your gender analysis, which will be carried out at a variety of levels. So depending on what your action is, you may have a sector level um, analysis, you may have a country um, profile, but based on that gender analysis, you will be asked to select um, specific gap objectives that you're going to contribute to. So that could be an objective around violence against women. It could be one around political participation, depending on your area of work and your sectors of concentration. So in terms of new actions, that will be easier. Um, you will be required to carry out this gender analysis to ensure that the gender dimensions are understood and to include in your new actions the gap indicators that you have selected where relevant. Um, the role of your implementing partners in this is increasingly important and obviously you'll need to make sure that you are requiring that data from them, that you're requesting it at the outset so that they, as they implement the program, are also gathering the data and monitoring it on a regular basis. Where data is not available, you'll have to look at options to potentially generate it or look at other sources um, of data that might help you. But the bottom line is that any data that you're gathering and anything that you're measuring that relates to beneficiaries will have to be sex disaggregated. And that's also true of the EU results um, framework. So for the ongoing activities, it's slightly more complicated. On the basis of your gender analysis, your indicators ideally should be refined, but we need to do that at the next opportunity that you have to do so. so in terms of um, existing budget support, for example, at the MPR in 2017, there may be an opportunity for you to look at including some of the indicators from the gap. So the ongoing actions, we've been more pragmatic about this and understand that we have to look for you know, one, an opportunity to review though, those within your, your program cycle management. Um, we also right now contributing to a revision of the budget support guidelines to also make sure that all new um, budget support programs are aligned with, with the gap and some of these new requests. Um, so when it comes to actually selecting your indicators, sorry I thought there was a question yet, um, you'll be asked to look at the gap which you've all seen, it has a number of indicators um, suggested there. Now, ideally, we would look for you to select one of those um, simply because that will allow us to aggregate the results. They're mostly aligned with the SDGs or with the EU results framework. So in an ideal world, they'll already be measured or some of the data will be gathered at um, national level. It also means that we will be able to aggregate those results and here at headquarters get a clear picture of how progress is, is, um, is going on the gap. Now, Obviously, in some contexts, some of these indicators might not be relevant to what you're trying to do, and we recognize that and accept that. So, you know, where there is a case, of course, come up with your own more country-specific, program-specific um, indicators that feed some of the objectives of the gap. And we here at headquarters level, we will manage that and look at how we aggregate those with the more um, 
specific one, with the more um, generic ones from the gap. So the minimum requirement for you all is to report against at least one objective per thematic area. So to be clear, I'm only talking about thematic indicators, and Marina will go on to the institutional shift ones. So um, we're asking for you to identify which indicators you will report against from those um, three objectives, and to do so by mid-2016. Again, at the end of this presentation, I'll um, put up a template so that you, you know, see what we're thinking of in terms of how you can do that. Um, we can go on to the next bubble. Thanks. So, as I said at the beginning, we're really looking to integrate this into existing reporting systems. So, we're not um, going to set up a whole new parallel database to the EU results framework. We are we're going to use the data that's gathered through the end of um, the end of projects reporting through the EU results framework. We will use all those results. We will look at them and we will identify the ones that relate to the gap. So as long as you've got them in your action documents right at the beginning when you do your new um, when you develop your new actions, they will eventually be gathered throughout the results reporting process. So we will have an indication of you know, all the indicators that feed the results framework, but also any other results that have been achieved. So you know, feel free to, to pick indicators that are not necessarily exactly aligned with the results framework if they are really more relevant to you, because they will still be gathered through that process. It will just make our job more difficult in terms of aggregation. Um, I'll, come to, yeah, I'll come to the questions in one second. Um, so all the thematic indicators will happen through that process. Um, and obviously, this is going to be easy for the new actions, as I've said. But the issue is that we will only be, um, will only be aware of the progress of those results once those, once those actions close. So there's going to be quite a big gap um, between are starting these changes and getting them into the action documents and feeding this, this, the, the procedures to the moment when we actually gather the results. And that's simply because at this stage, the results framework is only measuring, is only reporting, sorry, on closed projects. That may change in the future, but as it stands, we will have quite a, a big gap. So for us, that's too, it's too big a gap. We can't wait that long to know whether this is working and whether we're making progress, which is why we are going to have to ask you to, on an annual basis, send us some indication of how you're doing against these. And that is out with the scope of the EU results framework. And that's the, the template I will put up now and, and talk through. And you know, hopefully, you'll find that it is quite light touch and, and not too difficult in terms of your daily job. There's some questions coming up, which I'll respond to before um, going on to the template. Um, so the partner country statistics are often not gender segregated, uh, absolutely. And I think that's you know part of our job is to try and improve that at country level. So where you can support market partners to start doing that, fantastic. Your own implementing partners, all the NGOs you work through, they should be gathering data on the beneficiaries, and you need to start asking them to disaggregate it. If you don't ask for it, it won't happen. So you need to start generating that demand. Um, the SDGs are obviously going to be putting um, quite a strong um, ask on countries to start disaggregating data as well. You know, there is um, quite a lot of data out there from the UN agencies. So you know, it is a, a matter of also being quite creative at the beginning and finding solutions where you can. Um, Olivier's question, yes, um, absolutely. I think, I can't remember if that is still one of our gap uh, suggested activities, but yes, I mean, if you can look to support national institutes of statistics, uh, looking at how they can disaggregate data, but also gather um, such data, that would, be, um, that would be great. And you know, those are specific programs that could happen at country level. Um, and the chosen indicators have to be agreed between the delegations and member states. Um, no, not necessarily. I think we'll, we'll come to the template and you'll see where you as a delegation are contributing to a specific objective to one, to one of your programs, you don't need to go and agree that with member states. If that's one of your programs, 
that's absolutely fine. So I think there needs to be a division of labor in terms of who does what on gender at the country level and coordination so you're not duplicating efforts. But in terms of indicators, you don't need to agree those amongst each other. And member states will report separately. Yep. I'll bring up the templates so that you can see what we're thinking of doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, again, the objectives do not have to be in common. It would be great if they are, but if you find, for example, that um, Sweden has FGM as its top priority for country X, and that they're going to be working on that, that's fine. You don't need to also be contributing to those same objectives, and the new delegation could decide that um, women's participation in parliament is where they can add value and support the program, and therefore they would do that. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But you don't need to, in terms of the member states, it's great if there is a level of coordination and comparative advantage, but you don't need to all be reporting on exactly the same objectives and exactly the same indicators. Um, so this is the template, which we'll be asking you to fill in on an annual basis around September, isn't it, Marina? More or less, yeah. Sent by September. So what we're asking is, as you know, you've got your three minimum um, objectives to report against. So at a minimum, to provide us with those, so based on your gender analysis, let us know which thematic of ob objective you have selected and send us the template with that, along with um, information around which EU actor is going to be funding the support for this specific objective. So in some cases, it may be the EUD on its own, in, in the delegation, sorry, in other cases, it may be a joint action with other member states. So we've put an example up here. Um, it may be that you choose as your objective violence against women, for example. You would then select your indicator um, that applies to your program. So if your program is looking at um, child marriage, you have an indicator already in the gap that you could select. We then ask you to provide us with a baseline. Now, again, we recognize that in some cases, there is no baseline. So if that's, um, if that's your situation, we would accept that baseline is zero. And then on, annual, um, on an annual um, basis, thank you, Marina, <laughs> on an annual basis, we would then um, update. That baseline would get updated, and we would get a sense of uh, progress. We again ask you to tell us which one of your activities will be supporting the, um, the objective and this indicator. And so that's what we initially ask you to do. And then on an annual basis, we would be needing an interim progress. And again, this is because the results framework can't give us that. It can only give us the result at the end, at the close of your project. So in the meantime, on an annual basis, we would ask for an, an interim progress, which means you need to start asking your partners for that in developing your new actions. Um, the column on the, on the ROM will be filled at the end of um, projects, and that is what the EU results framework will be gathering for us. Um, the reason we want to know the amount allocated, that's really important, it's because we can't um, necessarily attribute the change to your intervention. So it's a, it's a contribution analysis that we're using. So therefore, knowing how much money is spent on this will increase transparency. So if we've achieved results, you know, result X with 100 million euros, we're being very clear what our financial contribution was to that. And we're not claiming that we solely, on our own, have managed to achieve result X. So it's really important that the, um, the amount allocated by the EU is reported in that column. So this is what we'll be asking for on an annual basis. Um, and I will, I can see that there are questions. I'll come to those. I just want to make a last point before I do that. Um, Blerina mentioned performance. And so we're really, with this gap, looking at how we track performance of EU delegations and how we not only track it, but we reward it. And you know where there is poor performance, we challenge it. So at the moment, the the DG is considering 
how we're going to do that, but what we're very clear about is that this template will be part of that. It will be part of the criteria that we used to assess performance. So we'll be looking at how delegations are doing in terms of their gender analysis. We'll be looking at how they're doing in terms of the objectives that they've picked, the results that they're measuring. We'll be looking at the gender marker um, and how many of those are, you know, zero, one, or two. And we will also be looking at the type of gender expertise that they have um, and how um, gender focal points are being supported in delegations. So once we have all that information, we'll come up with a tracking, um, an, a, a ranking, sorry, a way of ranking the delegations against each other. And we will be looking at how we then reward the ones that are doing well um, and where there's poor performance, how we can support them to um, improve that. And in terms of rewards, we're not at all talking about medals and more money. It's, you know, looking at more greater visibility, sharing that as good practice, um, et cetera. So it's a really important process, not just in terms of the results you're achieving, but also in terms of, um, of making sure that, you know, delegation's performance is, is up to standard in terms of the new gap. Um, I can see some questions which I'll scroll back up through. Um, that just, okay, so, yes, so baseline zero is fine if there really is no um, baseline information available. Um, then, if I get it correctly, give me an indication of two of two separate. Yes, you may have uh, two separate EU actors um, measuring similar indicators, absolutely, and you can send that, you send that in, and we will here at um, HQ look at how that gets aggregated. We're also very aware that there's a big risk of double counting, so, and the EU results framework is aware of that, so we're looking at how we avoid that. Again, that's why it's really important for you to tell us who the EU actors are involved in the, in the funding and the amounts um, that you're using. Um, poor performance, so in terms of what we call poor performance, in the gap, we've, um, if you look at um, the table of the gap, one of the footnotes clearly um, sets out the criteria which we're using to assess performance. And it's, um, as I said, it's in relation to the gender marker and how many, you know, if it is a zero, how well justified that is, um, the balance of gender marker G1 and G2 versus G0. So if a delegation is systematically reporting G0 on a number of its, um, of its programs, we would consider that there's an issue there. Um, whether gender analysis has been carried out or not is another clear criteria. The use of sex segregated data, the gender expertise, and whether this template is getting filled in. We will have all that information, and it's one of the roles that B1 is going to play, is, is look at that across the board of the EU delegations and rank how they're doing against each other um, according to this criteria. Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize that wasn't clear. The delegations, the EU delegations, we're not ranking country performance. That's the role of other people and the SDGs, et cetera. And we're ranking the delegation's performance in implementing the gap and achieving the results that are set out in, in the gap. Um, I hope that's clear-ish and that we've answered most of the questions. Um, and if that's the case, I guess we'll go on to, Marina's going to talk about Benedetta. Ah. Yes, yeah, sorry, Marina is going to go on to the institutional culture shift, which again is a big part of supporting that.